It's a pleasure to be here virtually for this year's Executives Performance Excellence Awards to recognize the best in innovation and service excellence at King County. These awards honor employees and work groups for their exceptional contributions in performance, leadership, and innovation. They recognize people who are helping to build a best-run government at King County, people who show us what good looks like, what best-run government looks like, what we can all do to become better. They apply lean thinking and exhibit our values in their work. It's an opportunity to celebrate our own successes and the employees who are responsible for them. Employees and work groups who've gone above and beyond to look at how they can do things differently to better serve our customers. Like a lot of our operations, these awards were interrupted by the arrival of COVID-19. We had planned to announce this year's recipients at a ceremony way back in March, but this was postponed as we rapidly shifted to doing the work necessary to protect our community from the spread of the virus. The innovation and compassion that our employees bring to their work has never been more evident than in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Whether it's our first responders or frontline employees selflessly answering the call to ensure people get the help they need, or staff switching to remote work and virtual counter service to limit the spread of the virus. I have been inspired by the care that our employees have shown for this community and for one another. Recognizing great work is important. Celebrating our accomplishments is important. And I am pleased that we can go on with this year's awards virtually. We received many high quality nominees for the 2019 Executives Performance Excellence Awards in eight categories. Five innovation awards, people, cost, service, ESJ, and sustainability. And three leadership awards for people leaders, individual contributors, and the Fred Jarrett Leadership Excellence Award. Today, in a series of socially distanced videos, we will share the finalists in each category and announce the eight recipients. Congratulations to all of this year's nominees for the tremendous work that they are doing for our customers and to move us closer to our true north, making King County a welcoming community where all people can thrive. Hi, I'm Whitney Abrams, the Chief People Officer here at King County. My role, simply put, is to focus on what we can do to support the employee experience and culture here at King County, all led by our true north and our values. I want to acknowledge the year it has been for all of us. It's been difficult at work and at home. I know too that the services King County employees provide to our residents is meaningful, impactful, and it's not always easy. I'm thankful and I'm inspired every day from what I learn of the passion, expertise, and dedication of our colleagues. As an employer, we want to build a workplace culture that is empowering new employees and one that supports and encourages staff to make decisions, try new ideas, and generally do their best to make things better for customers and coworkers. And today, I am here to present our King County Innovation Award for People. This year's honoree is the Department of Community and Human Services Recruitment and Hiring Initiative. By way of background, thanks to some expanded responsibilities and new funding, DCHS needed to recruit, hire, train, and onboard about 100 new positions by the end of second quarter 2019. So that's almost a quarter of the total DCHS workforce. DCHS was determined to not only find the right people for these roles, but also to seek out diverse candidates who reflect the populations we serve. The HR and ESJ teams worked together to create new recruitment and retention protocol for standard work. They created a tool for tracking and monitoring all stages of the recruitment process to ensure integrity. And every recruitment stressed the department's commitment to racial equity and recruiting with diversity. A few examples include supplemental ESJ questions, applications with applicant names removed at screening, and diverse interview panels. By mid-year, DCHS had competitively hired over 100 new positions. Half of the successful applicants were persons of color. This work was completed by just six people in DCHS, Elizabeth Cosby-Miles, Susan Churchill, 
Annette Coleman, Bridget Tibbs, Con Hang, and Elena Romani. Congratulations to the DCHS HR team for their extraordinary work and firm commitment to a racially justice value throughout this entire process. I am personally inspired and thankful of this project's success and that it was led with integrity and commitment to all of our King County values. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dwight Dively, the Director of the Office of Performance Strategy and Budget, and I'm here today to announce the Innovation Award for Cost. Uh, we had several very good proposals this year, and the one that was selected was from the Facilities Management Division of the Department of Executive Services, and it was around their four-year effort to establish franchises and rent for the right-of-way. Uh, as you may know, the county owns the roads in the unincorporated area of the county outside of cities. And many of the utilities, electric utilities, water utilities, sewer utilities, have their utilities in our rights of way. And legally, they are required to have a franchise to use the right of way. But for many reasons over many years, a lot of them never had them or those franchises had expired. And in addition, none of the utilities were paying any rent to the county for using our rights of way. And so about five years ago, the facilities management division said, that's not right. We need to get these uh, franchises in place and we should be able to charge rent. And four years ago, the county council approved that proposal and we began to implement it. Uh, not surprisingly, some of the utilities objected to that and filed a lawsuit against the county saying, you can't make us pay rent for the right of way. And that lawsuit went all the way to the state Supreme Court. And earlier this year, in a unanimous decision, the state Supreme Court said, yes, the county can charge rent for the right of way. And so I wanna really thank uh, FMD and the staff in the prosecutor's office who did a great job with that litigation. As a result, FMD is now in the process of getting franchises with all of the utilities who use our rights of way, uh, including the very largest one, which is Puget Sound Energy, which uh, we've agreed to a franchise for the first time in literally decades, which is great work by FMD. In addition to just doing the right thing and getting these franchises in place, they're going to generate a significant amount of new revenue for the county's general fund, perhaps as much as $14 million a year. And that was critical this year in doing the budget and avoiding some of the even more severe budget cuts we would have had to take. So congratulations to FMD and all the folks there who did a fantastic job getting franchises and rent for the right of way. Hi, I'm Natasha Jones, and as Director of Customer Service for King County, I recognize that some of our most valuable customers are our employees. That's why it's my honor to present the Innovation Award for Service to the Department of Human Resources for finding a way to make it easier, faster, and more equitable, and more secure for employees to verify that they work for King County. That's really important because if a King County employee can't prove their employment or income in a timely manner, they may miss out on getting a home or apartment, a car loan, a mortgage, a job, or even social service benefits that they're entitled to. This not only frustrates our employees, it frustrates our external customers, like mortgage and loan companies, property managers, or other government agencies. They may want to help or serve our employees, but they can't without the required paperwork. The verification of employment has always been a high volume activity for human resources. In the past, the department handled several thousand requests each year, and it took anywhere from an hour to five days to fill those requests. The process often exposed sensitive employee information like social security numbers to multiple employees who needed to work on filling that request. Human resources look for a way to simplify, standardize, and secure that entire verification of employment process. They partnered with a vendor that we already work with to develop an automated process where verification of employment can be done online by internal and external customers easily, immediately, and most importantly, accurately. The letters can even be printed on King County letterhead. The online tool can also be used for other types of employment information like visa or immigration letters. 
The service is provided through the vendor's website, so it's available to all employees at all times of the day, whether or not they have access to the King County Network as part of their job. The standardized self-service solution used existing technology, and it only cost the county $600 a year to maintain. By comparison, we estimate that our previous process cost the equivalent of two full-time employees. Congratulations to Human Resources for finding an innovative solution to an overly complicated labor-intensive process. And thank you for saving King County money and saving our employees time, aggravation, and opportunities. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Anita Whitfield, and as the new Chief Equity and Inclusion Officer for King County, it is my great pleasure to present the Innovation Award for Equity and Social Justice to my colleagues at Metro Transit. They're receiving this award for their work to design a mobility framework that will ensure that service and capital investments at Metro are targeted to the communities where the needs are the greatest. Metro's award for the mobility framework is a little different from some of the other award honorees. It's not really for a project or a program. It is really for a way of thinking and doing and being. It embraces targeted universalism. And for those of you who may not know what that is, it is an approach that recognizes the fact that not all people have the same opportunities to thrive and then taking steps to intentionally address that fact. If we are to truly realize the executive's true North vision of making King County a welcoming community where every member, every person can thrive, we have to recognize the essential role that mobility plays in the health, well-being, and prosperity of every King County resident, especially those that have been historically marginalized. And that is what the mobility framework does. At its core is a deep and abiding belief that mobility is a human right and that the absence of it can have a profound impact on someone's housing, employment, and in fact, every part of their potential to thrive. The mobility framework takes a pro-equity approach to mobility. Amongst its recommendations, providing more service in the areas of greatest need, requiring contractors and consultants to share our commitment to equity, and co-creating programs, services, and policies with stakeholders and community partners. Let me tell you just a little bit more about that last one. Metro didn't create the mobility framework in a vacuum. It partnered with an equity cabinet that included diverse community leaders who represent part populations that experience the biggest barriers to opportunity and access to transit. Those who've not historically been engaged in the county's decision-making. The Equity Cabinet led the process and co-created the mobility framework in partnership with Metro. The guiding principles and recommendations from this community partner will shape Metro's policies and plans into the future and guide the development of its operating and capital budgets and center equity and inclusion in it all. Metro Transit is King County's largest agency. And if we are to move closer to our true north, to a community where every person can thrive, then Metro's commitment to equity and social justice is key. For these and many, many other reasons, I say congratulations to the mobility framework 
for an innovative and truly partnering approach. And thank you for moving us closer to our goal. Hello, I'm Rachel Brumbaugh, and it's my pleasure to present this year's Innovation Award for Sustainability to Mobility Division of Metro Transit. As Acting Director of Climate and Energy Initiatives at King County, I know the important role public transportation plays in reaching our Strategic Climate Action Plan goals to sharply reduce carbon emissions and lead with climate justice. A key strategy to reach our goals is to make public transportation accessible, safe, user-friendly, and the preferred mode of travel for King County residents. But getting to public transit isn't easy for all residents. Many King County travelers don't have convenient mobility options that encourage taking transit, or they don't feel safe walking or riding a bike to a transit station or a stop. Because of that, they may choose to drive instead, or they may face significant challenges in getting to where they need to go, or where they might not make the trip at all. In April 2019, Metro launched Via to Transit. This pilot project enables riders to request a ride to or from three link light rail stations in Southeast Seattle and Tukwila that serve Metro and Sound Transit. Via to Transit is an on-demand rideshare service like Uber or Lyft that serves transit riders. Customers can request a ride either by phone or the Via app Riders can expect to get picked up within 10 to 15 minutes, and they may share a ride with other Metro customers when it is safe to do so. At this time, the service is available only in certain areas. Metro worked closely with community-based organizations to pilot the service, focusing on communities with poor air quality and populations with low incomes, Black, Indigenous, and people of color populations, and people with limited English proficiency and limited mobility options. The service prioritizes inclusivity. It offers a call center for those without a smartphone or data plan, interpreter services, wheelchair accessible vehicles, and reduced fares for youth, seniors, low income, and people with disabilities, and payment options for customers who may not have a credit or debit card. In addition, Metro translated marketing and communications materials into seven different languages and conducted extensive outreach to ensure that potential riders knew about the service. In the first nine months of operation, Via to Transit exceeded its goals in number of trips per week, average wait times, and average trips per driver per hour. Feedback indicates that 17% of riders used Via to Transit to replace single occupancy vehicle or Uber or Lyft trips, and 22% of riders were new users to the transit stations. Via to Transit was developed as a partnership between King County Metro, Sound Transit, the City of Seattle, and the Federal Transit Administration. It is an exemplary model of a mobility partnership, and results of the pilot project are already being shared nationally to inform best practices. Congratulations to Metro Transit's Mobility Division for developing an innovative rideshare service that enables more King County residents to choose sustainable transportation options. Thank you. I'm Gary Kurihara, Chief Performance Officer. I'm presenting the Leadership Excellence Award for individual contributors. This recognizes individuals who make significant and tangible leadership contributions by living our values and improving workplace culture, leading the way in support of organizational changes and improvements, and by driving for results to move us closer to our true north, making King County a welcoming community where every person can thrive. And this year's honoree is Michelle Sarju, Project Program Manager with Public Health. Congratulations. Michelle is an employee who lives our values in her daily interactions, and by doing so is building a better workplace and community for all. Michelle embodies our we respect all people and we are one team values, going out of her way to build understanding, relationships, and team spirit in the midst of the challenging work her section performs. Through her Best Starts for Kids prenatal to five work, she advances our true north by working to ensure that every person in our community 
gets a great start in life and an opportunity to thrive. She has partnered with the community on identifying ways to improve services that support families with young children and is especially focused on bringing greater racial equity to these services. She models our We Are Racially Just value by courageously calling out instances of racial oppression in our work, always with the goal of a non-racist society and workplace in mind. She coaches others on how they can personally advance racial justice in their work and identify and fight institutional racism. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you for the passion you bring to your work and our values. And your efforts to make this a fairer, more racially just place so every person here feels welcome and can thrive. Hello, I'm April Putney, the Executive's Chief of Staff, and I'm thrilled to be able to present the Performance Excellent Awards Leadership Award for People Leader. The Leadership Award for People Leader, as the name suggests, is presented to a leader in our organization who is an exceptional manager of staff. Having strong people leaders who can inspire and mentor their teams is crucial to our work, and they do that in several ways by educating their teams about our values and instilling those values into their team's actions, processes, and decision-making, by building relationships that motivate and empower others, by driving for and achieving results that make King County a better place for our employees and our residents, and by leading by example, by challenging the status quo and supporting others to think differently in ways that deliver measurable outcomes. This year's honoree is Alex Ebrahami, Coordinated Entry for All Housing Referrals Supervisor, Department of Community and Human Services. Alex is a people leader who has truly embraced and is guided by our values. He takes our We Are One Team value seriously and fully supports his team's professional development, at times even taking on our team, his own team members' responsibilities so that they can attend trainings. He keenly focuses on the customer and is a strong advocate of community engagement and ensures that the voices of people who have lived experience with homelessness is both sought and listened to. Alex modeled our We Drive for Results and We Are Racially Just values in his efforts to tackle the racial disparity among clients who are seeking housing. Alex helped us to discover that people of color tend to respond to our input questions differently than white people, which is mostly due to by whom and how these questions are asked. This has led to an understanding that we need to have more assessors of color and an improved tool for assessing their needs. Alex has also helped his white colleagues be better allies of people of color. He creates safe spaces and meetings to discuss issues like white fragility, microaggressions, and racism, challenging topics, but important ones to learn and grow from. This openness has brought his team closer together. Congratulations, Alex. Thank you for being a great people leader and help your team live our values, do great work, and help some of the most vulnerable people in our community find stable housing and permanently exit homelessness. I am very pleased to present the Fred Jarrett Leadership Excellence Award, named for former Deputy Executive Fred Jarrett, the driving force behind lean and continuous improvement for nine years at the county. The Fred Jarrett Leadership Excellence Award is presented to a senior leader in our organization who embodies our values and models their behaviors and works to instill them in our teams, processes, and decision making. It is presented to a leader who is always striving for better, who builds relationships that motivate and empower others to achieve results that move us closer to our true north, making King County a welcoming community where every person can thrive. Leaders have a vital role to play in creating a workplace culture we all want to see at King County, a best-run government culture, one that strives for performance excellence and accountability while respecting and supporting the people who do the work and the contributions they bring to our organization. Establish a workplace culture by modeling the workplace culture and exhibiting the behaviors that drive that culture. They inspire their teams to strive for better, to continuously improve, to deliver solutions that help the people of King County. The Fred Jarrett Leadership Excellence Award honors the very best in leadership at King County. This year's honoree is Caroline Whalen, Director of the Department of Executive Services. 
Throughout her 26 year county career, Caroline has been a leader who truly embodies our values. One who leads by example with both words and actions. Caroline was an early adopter of lean, embodying our we lead the way value by working to foster a culture of continuous improvement in DES. She's a strong proponent of standard work and has developed standard processes for many of DES's operations. A great leader is one who demands excellence from their staff while giving them the tools and opportunities to succeed. They have a willingness to drive innovation and experimentation, to drive for results. And Caroline does this by challenging her managers and teams to reach stretch goals and encourages them by recognizing their successes. She also understands that transparency, accountability, and humility are crucial to continuous improvement. Acknowledging success is important, but it's equally important to acknowledge where we have weaknesses or need help. By identifying problems, we can identify solutions, and Caroline is never afraid to be open and transparent in her quest to make things better for staff and customers. Caroline challenged her divisions to measure customer satisfaction and use their feedback to identify gaps and drive change. She volunteered to pilot a standard methodology for measuring the customer experience at DES, using data to better understand customer needs. She volunteered to pilot a bus run government center of excellence, where she developed superior processes and systems that can serve as a, an example to the rest of county government in DES. By volunteering her department for these pilots, she has shown that she wants her department to not only get better, but to be an example and a model for other departments so we can all get better. Caroline manifests our respect for all people value by introducing processes and behaviors to place all her staff on a level playing field. Prior to COVID-19, Caroline regularly visited DES sites across the county so that staff would have direct access to leadership. And she could thank them then for their work. Now she hosts regularly scheduled online department leadership meetings to ensure that she is sharing information, answering questions, and maintaining alignment on strategy and priorities. Similarly, Caroline has worked for a We Are Racially Just King County by authorizing the creation of ESJ change teams at the division level to raise and address issues that bring about genuine change in work culture. Congratulations, Caroline. You are a wonderful leader, an important partner, a valued friend, and a worthy recipient of the Fred Jarrett Leadership Excellence Award. Thank you.